The member for Beaches East York. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day with this bill over and over again. Uh, but here we are. I, as I said earlier, um, Bill 39 is a horrendous bill. It will not build housing faster. It will not build more housing. We can do that without Bill 39. And, you know, I came here, I have a track record of working across party lines, of working with everyone. I just want to get good things done. For the greater good, I try as best I can. I have a track record of doing that, both in office at City Hall and prior to and afterwards. But I, and I want to work with this government. I really do. And I'm trying to. Um, and I want to work with this government to build housing, because we're in a housing crisis, and we know that. Um, but we need to build in the right places, right? And so are we really looking at provincial lands? I haven't heard anything about examples like the LCBOs. LCBOs are one-story, by and large, one-story um, buildings on arterial roads. We all have them in our municipalities. Who wouldn't want to live above an LCBO, right, Mr. Clark? Um, absolutely. And so provincial lands, are we talking to uh, churches? Are we talking to other um, property owners like that? Strip malls, uh, surface parking lots. It's ridiculous to have surface parking lots in a downtown um, like Toronto. Look at Manhattan. We can put our, our parking lots underground and build up. We should be building up on top of everything. Um, but we, so we want to be building in the right places. We want to be building, building in existing communities, in walking sustainable neighborhoods. That's where people want to live. They don't want to live in a wetland. They don't want to live on a floodplain. Um, and uh, we should be building where we have transit corridors. Um, absolutely. We want to be bold as well. We want to be building the right types of housing, not single-family detached homes on farmland. Um, in the green belt, we want quadplexes, duplexes, triplexes. We want co-ops. What, what are we doing to address vacant properties, vacant homes? I've, I've used the example. I have. I dare you to come. To, I bring you to my riding and see this beautiful home, four bedrooms. It's been empty for 30 years, while people die on the streets and being homeless. So, you know, it's just we have to be addressing every single thing if we're serious about. The housing crisis, which I believe we all are. We could be, you know, laneway suites, garden suites, we're talking about that, secondary suites, but why just three units per site? Why not four? Why not be gutsy, gutsier? Um, home sharing, you know, we have upwards of two million empty bedrooms supposedly in Toronto. We have seniors who are want to age in place, who are feeling isolated. We have students looking for affordable rental partnering them up. There are all kinds of home sharing groups that do that. Why aren't we educating people on that and, and doing an information campaign on that? Uh, Multi-residential towns, the whole gamut for housing. So we can solve the housing crisis together. I truly believe we can if we <laughs> listen to each other and work together. But here's the thing. I'm trying to work with the government, but they're not trying to work with us. Because in committee, they continually vote down our amendments. I'd like to think I'm fairly polite and cordial and collegial, um, but you know, um, that doesn't seem to work. And you know, we push for extra days for presenters because really this is, I get that we want to solve the housing crisis and we want to do it as quickly as possible, but it just seems super rammed through and without p giving everyone their voices. And we, we propose to do more days of speaking for presenters, and that was ruled down as well. So I'm not feeling, not feeling the love for working together to solve the housing crisis. Um, so there's that. Um, but really, the word that comes to mind for this whole bill is unnecessary. So you know, we won't talk fully about the affront on democracy because I'm running out of time. But we don't, we don't need Bill 39 to get things done at the municipal level with councils. I worked with two different mayors for the city of Toronto, Rob Ford, rest in peace, 
and John Tory, and we didn't need Bill 39, and we got things done. And we worked across party lines, not always, but by and large we did, and we did good stuff. And you can see there are more cranes in downtown Toronto than there are in the four largest cities in North America. So, you know, we were building housing. Um, and we didn't need Bill 39. So, and that would be the first place in North America that had minority rule. Do we want to carry that banner? Do we want to be that, for, that place that does that? I don't think so. Now we get into farmland. What else can we talk about? So many things. Farmland. We've heard time and time again um, from Peggy at Ontario, at o o OFA. We're losing 319 acres of farmland a day. Duffins Rouge is the only agriculture preserve in Ontario. Why, why go there? When we, we can, you heard from the planners, I had the letter out earlier, Paul Bedford, former chief planner for the city of Toronto, very credible guy, very well respected globally. You have over 700,000 units in the pipeline alone for, for Toronto. Almost half of what, what, we're, what our goal is, the 1.5. And I say our goal because it is our goal. Um, so we don't need to touch the farmland. What, you know, honestly, once it's gone, it's gone. You know that we, I, I could count the times we have spoken. We have all shown the love for farmers in here. Right, left, and center, we appreciate farmers. So we claim. And yet we're, we're, we don't have a problem with getting rid of class one farmland and wreaking havoc on farmers. Uh, I don't, I don't, I think actions speak better, louder than words on that. So you have your planners, you have your, um, you have your farmers, you have AMO, you have, um, you also have um, people, Parks Canada, not consulted. Parks Canada? How could that have, they have been missed? They also mentioned, as others do, that um, Indigenous communities weren't consulted. That's terrible. That's so terrible. 2022, truth and reconciliation. You know, nothing about us without us. That, that is just, we've heard that. You know, I, I don't know how that happened, but there needs to be a big change in that. So it's unnecessary, you've heard that over and over again. We can achieve the goals, we can build housing together. There's no need to go into farmland. There's no need to have a minority rule. Respect the Green Belt, respect Ontarians. I, I think you've all seen, you've, you've had the letters, emails, uh, hundreds and hundreds of emails come to your offices. Rallies galore, rallies outside your constituent offices. You know, I, I think it's going to be hard to, to go around your communities this Christmas and, and you know, show your faces if, if this bill passes. Uh, you know, I, I come from a small town. I know what it's like when everyone knows everything and, and they're right there um, and there's no escape from the grocery store or walking down the street. They're, they're, they're going to have things to say about Bill 39. They're not happy. You've misread... Um, Ontarians on the green belt, you really have. Um, and I'm happy to work with you to pull that back and to build housing together in the right places, the right types of housing. I'm, I'm your girl to work with you, just not build with Bill 39. Thank you. We're gonna move to questions and answers for the member of Beaches of Seward. And I recognize the member for Nickel Belt. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I was wondering if the member could comment about this idea that uh, the rules will be changed so that uh, following a provincial government objective and priority, uh, the municipal council will only need 30% vote in order to move uh, with those uh, provincial government priorities. Um, does she think that this is this respects uh, democracy and this respects municipal councils? 
Thank you. The member for Beaches East York to respond. So I think we all remember when we were new politicians, um, whether it was municipal or whether it's here or both, and you were so excited to come and represent your community, and you won your elections, hard-fought elections for sure. And you know, until you actually run a campaign and run an election, you don't know how grueling it is, and you know, and hopefully rewarding. And you get there, and all of a sudden, you find out your voice is is gone. I can't imagine. I can't. There are about seven new councillors uh, in Toronto. That I can't imagine what they feel knowing that their voice uh, may not not matter on on certain votes. And I feel that they they will have been robbed. Answer. And um, and also their constituents, their communities will have been robbed. So it's wrong. It's wrong. We don't need Bill 39. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Um, member for Elgin, Middlesex, London. Thank you, Speaker. Um, I appreciate the member opposite's questions and, and a concern about a lot of things, um, green belt included. Um, I would offer one suggestion that it's about balance. And uh, you know, we talk about infill or gentle densification. I keep asking it, but I don't get the response. We can't infill to success. We just can't. And if we're going to accommodate 2 million people and build 1.5 million homes in the next 10 years, Speaker, we have to look at alternatives and we have to do it now. We're behind the eight ball now. So deny and delay isn't going to work. Action today is going to work. So I would ask the member, we can't do it all by infill, so how and where do we build 1.5 million homes? Thank you. The member for Beaches East York. So, and I listed, that was a great question, thank you so much, cordial and collegial, it's the way we, the way we roll, right? Um, so I have mentioned several ideas and building up the avenues, right? And I have Danforth Avenue in my neighborhood, a subway line underneath, two stories, primarily two stories. I do have one 12 story um, on the Danforth, at Maine, I have more because it's a mobility hub, but we can be building up the avenues. We can be, go guts here, go four suites as of right and get thing, more things as of right. Laneway Suites, which, which as you know, <laughs> I've mentioned a million times, was my baby with um, Deputy Mayor Balau, is as of right. We're, are we looking at vacant properties at all? Are we looking at vacant residential? Answer. Are we seriously looking at that? And what are we doing about home sharing, the empty bedrooms? There are lots of ways to do, get creative, and we can do it. 700,000 units in the pipeline in Toronto is half, basically half of what we need. Let's do that in other municipalities. Thank you. Next question. The member for Kingston and the Island. Thank you, Madam Speaker. My question for the member from Beaches East York is, um, could you tell us about an example of a time when she worked with somebody um, maybe a little bit surprising, somebody that you, we might think she might not get along with in order to get housing uh, built. The member for Beaches East York. Um, well, as I said, um, you know, I've actually never been connected to a political party till now, so I wasn't like at City Hall, there was no connections to anything, and I work with everyone, but um, I did work with uh, the Premier. All three Fords, Michael Ford, Rob Ford, and uh, Premier Ford. And we passed um, Transform TO. Excuse me, just a reminder that we can't name the people that are here. Apologies. Um, and we, we passed the city's first climate adaptation and mitigation uh, strategy together, tra Transform TO. That was, uh, I was chair of Parks and Environment, and I worked with everyone, and I found out what what people's concerns were, what their suggestions were, and you know, you listen as well as uh, hopefully persuade, and you can get things done and work together. And very proud of that. Lots more examples, Lane May Suites. Um, Thank you. 